Hello everyone and welcome to Tonic TV, the craftiest way to begin your Sunday. Uh, so welcome along, let's find out what we got on today's show. First up, I'll be going through the amazing deals we've got on the store this weekend. Next, we've got Alison giving you a masterclass with the tailored frame die sets. We've got Maria Willis giving us a stamping tutorial and we've got BB Cameron showing off the Nouveau Aqua Shimmer pens. So there you go, a jam-packed show for you with loads and loads of crafty stuff. So first up, I'm going to talk to you about the bundles that are available on the weekend. Every weekend, from Friday all the way until Monday, we've got awesome deals on products and big discounts. And this weekend is no different, and it's a stamping bundle weekend, all right? So what I'm going to do is go through those awesome bundles that are available on the store for you to find this weekend. Our first stamping bundle this weekend is a Bell Boutique stamp bundle. And you've got four sets in total, and these are feminine, cute, and really elegant stamps. And they're available for 50% off. We've got a Marmalade World stamp set, and these are super cute critters. And in this, you're going to have uh, an elephant, you're going to have characters, and you're going to get all these accessories too. And they're available at 50% off. It's a whimsical frame stamp set next. You get three stamps in total, and they've got really elegant borders and sentiments there for you at 50% off. We've got a flower stamp set bundle for you next, and there's three stamps again in total, and you've got Dainty Daisy, Perfect Petunias, and Magnificent Magnolias are available at 50% off. The next bundle as part of this stamp bundle weekender is a background stencil and stamp set with two stamps and two stencils available at 50% off. We got a mystery stamp set bundle with seven mystery stamps inside, would usually cost just over £55, but available for you at £20. We've got a Nouveau Hybrid Ink selection for you next, and these are four different sets of our trend launches. There's three ink pads in each, and it's available at 50% off. We've got a Nouveau Alcohol Marker Pen bundle for you, carrying six packs in wonderful colors, available at 35% off. We've got a Nouveau Stamp Cleaning bundle next, so you can look after your stamps the right way, with stamp cleaning solution and a stamp cleaning pad available at 35% off. And finally, we've got a Nouveau Mystery Bundle for you with all sorts of goodies inside. Would usually retail for over £30, available for you for just £5.99. And there you have it. Those are your special stamping bundles this weekend. First up on the show then, we have got Alison showing you a masterclass on how to use the tailored frames. Hello, today I'm going to be sharing with you some tailored frames. I'm going to show you a little masterclass of how to put them together. But first I'm going to show you some examples. So... What can you do with tailored frames? They are your home deco. They are your family frames that you can share around your house. They are little ornaments. They're the fronts of your cards. So this one is a card front. They're also, again, little bits of home deco, personal sayings to you. Have you got a motto for your family that you'd like to show on your wall? This is where you can share them. And also, if you see behind me, you can even make great big constellations of these frames. So that could be little pictures of all your family in there with little sentiments, little sayings, the funny sayings that they come out with. Lots of things you can do with these these dies. Yeah, it's a great like it's a great set. These ones are for. Like you, you want to have it in your collection because it's like, oh, just knock up a frame. Well, wait, like here, here it comes. You know that that's just you've got it there in your collection to bring out and be able to make a frame at will. And like you'll see some of those, you can add texture and different papers and all this stuff to like create the effect or that you want. So lovely for creature of original pieces, I guess is where it, where it stands. But yeah, really, uh, but really nice. So we have two different sizes of square frames so this is your first i've taken the dies out just to show you this is your floating breeze flame fri frame i need to put these two thin don't i so what does this make this makes your wider edge frame so it's very much totally square so that's your floating breeze your next one then makes a flatter frame so this is your shallow bay. So we're all going a little bit summer here. So your shallow bay is this frame. So it's a thinner bevel and a wider edge. So depending on what you want your frames to be. But don't be, don't be afraid to combine them either because these combine very well. 
We also have then the tailored frames in the hexagon. So this one is, this will make you this shape. And we have a layering frame then that goes with it. So there's your die set and there's your frame. So you've got a beautiful pattern. They will make one pattern, one single pattern. If you want a paper piece or you want to do a little bit of colouring, a lovely idea. And that's the type of so frame that's like original, you know, it's not going to, they're not going to come like cheap if you were to buy that as a frame. Like no, elsewhere, exactly. Because it's an original shape to you and you can create that design on there. And again, it's like, you know, we're trying to buy frames in the house at the moment like we're, with, with me and it, yeah, they can be put, like pretty expensive. And then you have the whole thing of like hanging them and then maybe repainting them and things like this. With this, you're creating it from the beginning as you want. So, that's right. Yeah, really nice. So I'm going to start, I'm just going to do the basic frame. I'll do, without cutting, these frames will change sizes as well for you. So this frame here is, the outer edge is, let me just measure, and I'll go from the right end. This is 10 and a quarter inches, and this is pretty big frame, I think. You can extend them by cutting them on an A3 sheet. So where you take your die, let me just, uh, it does take a little bit of working out. Oh, they new dies and I haven't taken them off the sheet yet. And they've got a super sticky tape behind them. There we go. So if you wanted to make them bigger, you can go as big as you want really, as big as the piece of card you've got. So this is your die as it comes. Let me just take this tape off the back. Should have done this earlier, shouldn't I? So if you're wondering what this loose little die is here, this is your embossed wood effect that you can add to the dies. Looks amazing when you've inked it or you've added a little bit of definition with mousse. Right. That's your die. And that is your embossing sheet. So, if you're going to make these bigger, imagine now that my A3 sheet here is my, my piece of card. So that's a pretty big piece of card. I think we look in almost to an A2 in UK sizes there. So I would cut the first die but stop the machine before it gets to the end. Then you need to slide it down, but cut from the other end, because you don't want this end cut. Whichever end you want, you don't want the middle bit cut. But make sure all your lines are tallying up, because otherwise it's not gonna work. And then when you've cut it all, make sure your frames are the same length, or at least the opposite sides are the same length. So I'm hoping that makes sense to you. So the one I'm going to show you first is our shallow bay. So that is this die set. I've got so many die sets here today. So this has got the wider strip, the wider embossing, but it's a shallower frame. So it's this one. And I'm just going to show you how to put this frame together. So as you can see, even from the back, it's all neat and tidy. That could be the shape you want. You've got little squares on the corner you could decorate. Maybe you don't want a beveled edge and the chamfered corner. Maybe you do want a flat edge. So let me get my pieces here. So this is my die cut. So I'm hoping, are we looking down, down? Yes, lovely. So we've got all the embossed lines all in place. And we've also got the measurements on the end. So it's got inches and it's got centimetres. So we are around about 25 and a half centimetres and just over 10 inches. And that will give you a frame this size. So how do we put them together? Just fold your lines first. So I'm just going to score them with my fingers first. Work from... I find it easier to work from middle out sometimes. Oops, there we are. 
and then I want to make those those um, crease lines really crisp so I am using my folder to do that so we go from the other side and there so then we're gonna if you I'm hoping you can look down so we're just gonna curl those around so we're making a sausage so we're going to hide our measurements that makes it easier to put together because your shortest edge sometimes catches when you're popping the frames in together let's so put your shortest edge on the outside so i've i'm using glue purely because i find it's got a better grab and more longevity because you don't want your frames up on the wall falling apart so rest them together but give them a little bit of a push and you can push them down flat and then just put your folder over it so that is the shape you're going to get a little sausage so you're going to need four of those which i've got here because you didn't want me gluing them all together here. Yeah? So I've got four frames, all exactly the same. So starting with these, you've got a little tab on the top. Bend your tab over. Make sure this is always, they're always opposites together. So always make, make, make you think you've got a male and you've got a female part. So your male part is your tab. Your female part hasn't got a tab and they slot in together and then you're going to put a little bit of glue so a little bit of glue on the back a little bit of glue on the outside of the tab and a teeny tiny bit under the fold there we are so pop your next side on slide it in put your tab down and then just push them together and you do exactly the same on each side get the glue again a little bit on the back outside of the tab and a little bit inside there we are. and again then opposite edges Always make sure then that your tab is on the outside. So that's your three sides together. Last one now. I tend to glue this one both at the same time. And then you just slot it all in together then. So same thing. Glue on the back. Glue on the little bit on the front and the tab. Same here. And that's as quick as you can make these frames. Your longest part is the die cut in. So just pop the frame in. Do exactly the same on the opposite side. Give them a little bit of a push. And there's your frame. That is as hard as it is. There we are. Make sure everything is nudged in. And that's as, that's your frame so that's as big as your dies will go making them as the die is so i think that's a fair size i mean that's a big picture yeah to pop in there or a big project i mean if you're a mixed media pro um, artist um this will will frame your mixed media i think I put a frame on anything and it's it's definitely a piece of art yeah yeah it's not just a picture then it's a piece of art decorate your frames Add whatever you like to them. Here's one with, you can really see the yeah. embossing detail on this one. It's been inked to within an inch of its life, I think. <laughs> this is our Vicky doing this, but it is stunning. It's, yeah. All the edges, you wouldn't know that's not wood. No, no. It, it, it's all, you know, unless it's another canvas for you to work with, uh, that section. So you've got your art in the centre, just like Ali said, there's like, you know, recently at home, he's doing this art with like masking tape and acrylic paint. You know, you just create yeah. your own sort of modern art. 
little sheet, but then you've got the frame to match then. That's been the hardest bit is the framing. And exactly. with this, you just create your own to the size you want. And uh, yeah, you can make something really, really cool. So the next one we've got now, we're going on to, um, oh, do you know, I've forgotten the name again. We've done Shallow Bay and we're now doing Floating Breeze. So this is your more of a box frame, but I want to show you this time now that we're going to cut them down a little bit. So we're starting with the same, same die cut, exactly the same. We've got all our numbers along the bottom, just over 10 inches and 25 and a half. But we can choose how big do we want this frame. So I think we're going to go about 18 centimetres, I think because I've already cut some, that's the reason. So you're going to look on the bottom, where's your marking? Use your guillotine, push it along to the edge. Now I'm looking at 18 centimetres. My line is right on the cutting edge. And then just chop it. So I'm just going to make sure I've got the right size, yes. So that's my little bit of waste card, but you pick your size. Don't forget, this is outer edge measurement of your frame. So we're actually measuring this side, the top side, rather than the inside. So make adjustments for that as well. You need to cut it a little bit bigger if you want a bigger frame. So again, we do the folds. Just fold. Sometimes I go from one side, other times I just go from the middle out. But you do whichever is easier for you. Again, crease your, crease your edges because you've got those nice crisp edges then. And I think on a frame they are important. Last one. There we are. And that is it. That's our frame. So we're doing it exactly the same again. We put in the shorter edge on the outside and a little bit of glue. So you can decide you may want concentric frames to fit inside each other as we had with the, the family frame. You may want to add a couple of them. You know, I think I think they look lovely when they're all layered up. Mm. You can also layer one on top of the other to get more depth as well. So that is my frame together. And that's as hard as it gets, really. So again, I've done exactly the same. I've made three more to go with it. So let's start putting these together. Again, we've got our male piece without tab, female piece without a tab. So make sure that your tab is ready to join the next one. And they go together exactly the same as we did before. So a little bit of glue on your square at the back, a little bit of glue on that chamfered edge and the outside of the tab. There we go, there's one done. So again, just making sure I've got it the right way. This one is a little bit, you need to think a little bit more because the edges are this, more or less the same size. But just check that tab is ready to go for the next join. So again, a little bit of glue on your tab and the inner bit. Don't go too far in because the card doesn't go that far in. So just catch your tab as you go in. Oops. Oh, it's not going to go that way because it's, it's the wrong way. So I'm telling you, do as I say, not as I do. There we go. So there's our three sides. And the last one then, we're going to fold the tab. A little bit of glue inside glue on the tab and a tiny bit inside there and I'm going to do exactly the same on this one bit on the outside fold your tab and that little chamfered edge and pop this one in together there we go make sure 
it doesn't catch on the corner. Last one. I would do all these together. I wouldn't like glue part of a box, then go away and leave it and come back to it. Because sometimes you need to open just slightly the other angles. So make sure you glue them all in the same time. And there's the frame ready to go again. So they're pretty quick really. So I've done a couple of the sizes here. So we've got the big frame that we just showed you. We've got a smaller one. So you can see they, they lie inside each other beautifully. Another one. And then we've got a teeny tiny. You can go down to as far, I think, as two inches. Two inches, I think, is the smallest. Let me just see. Yeah, two inches. So that is a really teeny tiny box. I mentioned if there's one on the front cover, I can show you. Right. On the front here, that little box there that holds a flower is the two inch box. So the inside, obviously this is two inches on the outside of the frame. So the inside is pretty small. But it, it may be enough for what you want. It may be a hanging, a wall hanging with little squares. It looks really, really pretty. Mm. They can also be, I've made them all squares today, but they can be rectangles as well. Just by altering the side measurements, have some longer, some shorter, just make sure the opposites are the same size. So that's those. And the next one I'm going to show you now. Oh, and you can put them layered on top of each other like that. So you've got a deeper frame, especially when you do when you mix media projects. These are real bobbins here and a real reel of cotton. So you can see you've got plenty of depth. If you wanted more depth, then just add more frames and then put your back in panel. So the last one is our hexagon. How do we put the hexagon together? Well, it's more or less the same. Let me show you all the dies first. I'm not going to need my guillotine, so I'm going to move that out of the way. So we'll have a little bit more. We do have a layering die set. Where did I put it? Let me show you the die. It's, it looks a lot smaller, even though you make a bigger project, it looks smaller because that is your actual die. So it may not be as big as you're thinking. They're quite compact dies as well. It they're is. Not, they're not like you've got all these different, like, you know, loads and loads and loads of bits. It's done all the like measuring for you. And, and uh, yeah, I was surprised by that. You know, mm. it's easy to store just to keep it yourself. Exactly. So this is your layering set. I'm going to take the patterns out for a minute just so that I can explain the die set for you. This one is a little bit different when it, with its measurements. It's not done in inches. Um, it's got four measurements. So when I get rid of these now, you'll understand what the four measurements are. So let's take these off. And the last one. Oops. So there's our die set without the pattern pieces. So our four measurements on here correspond to your four outer dies here. So your outer die will be number four. So that's as big as your shape will be. If you cut to number three, it's going to be the next size down. Number two is going to be the third size in. Number one is the second but a uh, smallest so if they marry up with these die shapes you don't have to have this die shape with you you can make it yourself but i think this die makes it easier for you and i'll show you how now sounds like i'm going into a bit of a a how now bit you there doesn't do it that. That's how, how now. now so i've made the biggest just Made it easy so you can see it much easier than, than fiddling with a teeny tiny frame. 
but it goes together exactly the same no matter what size you pick. So again, you're seeing a pattern here now, isn't there? <laughs> Fold them all over, crease the lines. And I think, you know, people are going to be impressed by these. Yeah. I really think they are. It's a great, you know, like I know you hear the word essential and, and that kind of thing like quite often in the craft industry but this is one that you want to have in your stash to be able to just pull out you know just pull out and say right i need a frame for something because you don't know something. you're always going to need it you, you could be making a card which thinks actually that's beyond the card i want to make that as a little or a concept they i want to make that into something a bit more home decor -y or something just says you know home sweet because a lot of cards can be you know they Nice bits of art and stuff, in, you know, in a different light with a frame. They become exactly. Something that says home sweet home for a home welcome home card. You might want to frame and put it in. And you've got your frames here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, also, you know, when, when you have your children's car, uh, photographs, when they send them on from school, they come in a pretty basic frame. You could send them in a lovely little frame you've made as a card right inside it. It's a definite keepsake then. Much much easier as well to send. Like if if, if you're going to send it in the post, so say you're going to send someone a little package, yeah, with a, um, like a picture of, of a happy time together or something that you've had, you send that in the post. If you send in a frame, well, you know you know what idea what's going to you know like it to happen. But you send this in a nice bubble wrap envelope, it's going to get there and it's easy to slot. You know. Also think of them as protection when you are posting stuff, because if you've got say you've made a card and you've got beautiful three D flowers on it. It's very hard to find something to post that in mm -hmm. without getting it damaged. You could use one of these just as protection. Your flowers will sit inside there. It's not going to get squashed. It doesn't even have to be made out of any beautiful cardstock because it could just be protection for your card. Put put like yeah, put a, a lid on it. You know, they used to do like a box because you, you can make can. those into a, bo you know, yeah. a box, couldn't you? So oh gosh, yeah. So you put them in the lid and, and yeah. then you, you know tape down or whatever, yeah. something nicer than tape, or something uh, on the side there, like a latch, and you could just have a little. You got yourself a little Oops. box then. This one is acetated, so that is going to be protected forever. Whatever you want, yeah, really, like, and the acetate's put between the layers. I was glad of that. Not to go on too much about these pictures <coughs> I've been hanging in the home, but obviously you can tell they're, they're causing me a few issues. They're obviously causing but, no bother. The frame fell like yesterday, and I was like, oh no, I could hear it like falling, the, the screw came out of the wall. And um, also, not as heavy as a frame as well, another good point. Right? But like the screw came out of the wall, and it fell to the floor. I thought, oh no, the glass is smashed. But they had like an acetate instead in front of it, and it was like, thank you for that. You know, otherwise, that would have yeah. been a, a hell of a cleanup. But that's it. If you've got a wall, you know, you want to stick something to it and you don't want to put nails in necessarily. You can do something a lot lighter with this yeah. than you would be able to otherwise. Well, you can get those sticky strips. Yeah, on the Velcro ones. You know, they, they are not going to pull anything off then. And plus, you know, if you are into your home decor, these are quick to change. Yeah. You haven't got to go around the, the shops looking for different frames. They're quick to change. They're a couple of pieces of cardstock and they're done. Yeah, knock up a new... Like all the, you know, the length and breadth of, car, of card is your is your limit to what you can do with the uh, like the color so say you want to you know your color scheme has changed in your home you want to change that out for a, a red or something like that it's only the only thing stopping you is the color of the card yeah you're not gonna have to find a paint and just paint it all up and stuff like that so yeah as well you know it's and i mean crazy cool product not so long ago there was lots of wall art with bits of, of wallpaper in that the people yeah. liked wasn't it? easy to do absolutely easy to do Right then, so there's our hexagon. I've just laid out the pieces. So the little bit of a difference on this one, I'm just going to glue the tabs for a minute. So pop the tab in. It's almost like making a, a long train, not a sausage. So make sure we're all your chamfered edge. You've got your chamfered edge. They all go to the middle. And then you pop it in. And just keep going until you've got the six joined together. So and it means you know you can add all these different textures to it. So say I'm thinking now of the more so like you like Eugene's done with the like, service before, you know, that sort of um 
almost sort of nautical mixed media where it's just like you've got all these little bits you can stick. How much easier is it to stick it upon a, you know, card base of a frame than us? And you just add in the layers yeah. and the textures. And you can add that layer and texture to it, you know, laying flat if you want, I guess, and then just fold it afterwards. But Ali would have to tell you whether that is acceptable. If you wanted to decorate or add sort of texture, so, so say the ones which are like the... I would decorate the them flat. One. So decorate them flat and then decorate you fold. Decorate them flat. If you're putting your wood in, obviously you do that while they're flat as you make it, as you're cutting them. Okay. So cut your die, put your embossing on it. If you're inking it, ink it at that point because it's much easier to ink it when it's flat on your desk. Or you've got your shimmer powders, um, your glacier paste, you can use your stencils on them. Loads and loads of things you can decorate these with. Pattern card stock. I mean, there's some gorgeous pattern card stock out there that you can use. Right, so we're going to bring all these in now. So we've got one more joint to do. These, these have made our nice long sausage. So how are we going to put them together? I'm going to turn it over so you can see the back. So the back... Hang on. The square, the extra bit is on the outside. So keep going, the extra bit is on the outside and the next bit will just slide in. So this is the back that you see in now. All right, so I just want you to see that extra square. So go around again, squares on the top, make sure it doesn't catch. And then the last one. So you get to that point and they're all together and the last one now is your last tab to glue so pop your glue on the tab and then you're gonna tuck it in and then just wiggle it together it may not grab tightly but you'll see the next bit now right i'm not gluing anything else and the reason i'm not gluing it is because I've got a backing panel. If you're not going to use a backing panel, I would kind of look at the lines on your mat. Make sure the lines on the sides are straight. And the chance is if they are straight and you've got a middle point top and bottom, then all your angles are right. So just look at your sides and look at the middle point. If you're using a backing plate, it's easier. So I'm just going to pop glue on the back. I'm not even gluing any of those angles together because it's going to be held totally by the backing plate. If I wasn't using the backing plate, then I would go underneath and glue them all. So take your plate, take your backing plate, just pop it on the back and you'll see you can just give it a little bit of a push. Make sure top and bottom is right. And then the sides will come in. And that then. I'm not quite even there. So you'll have an even edge all the way around. If you push one side, it's going to go out the other side. So just be careful. There we go. I think we're just about right now. Be very gentle what you're pushing because it's easy just to push it too far. Ooh, I'm a little bit heavy handed on times, yeah. There we go. I've got a nice even edge all the way around. Press it all down. There's my frame with the back all done. So I'm hoping that I've given you a couple of tips there that you can use along the way and that you've enjoyed seeing the frames. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Thanks, Ali. Those are the tailored frames and they're available on the store now and there's discount on them individually and as a bundle on both the UK and US stores. Now, next up, we have got uh, a stamp weekend uh, on Tonic Studios uh, this weekend and we've got Maria Willis here to show us a little bit more about the inks and stamp cleaning fluid.
Hey guys, it's Maria Willis from cardbomb.com. Happy Sunday from California. Today I get to talk to you about hybrid ink, how to use it, and how to clean it up. So after we talk a little bit about the ink, we will be talking about this magic potion here, as well as the Nouveau Stamp Scrubber. So let's flip the camera down and go check them out. Today we'll be taking a closer look at the Blue Blossom, Marion Bright, Dream in Color, and Woodland Walk Color Trends of Hybrid Ink Pad. Each of these ink collections comes with three different ink cubes, and now I'm going to show you a close-up look of the colors that come in each of these trends. So in the Blue Blossom trend, we've got Raspberry Smoothie, Siren Blue, and Midnight Surf. For each color swatch, I have both stamped and ink blended the colors to show you how crisply the inks stamp and how well they blend. In the Merry and Bright collection, you've got Sliced Strawberry, Moroccan Teal, and Marble Statue. The Dream in Color collection is made up of a grouping of soft pastels. You've got Mint Macaroon, Lotus Flower, and Powdered Peach. The Woodland Walk collection is made up of Soft Suede, Pistachio Green, and Amber Ochre. Hybrid inks are really great to work with because once dry, they are permanent. You can get them wet and the ink will not move or lift, which makes them perfect for watercoloring. You can also use them with alcohol-based markers. Here I've chosen a light-colored yellow ink, and I'm going to color on top of that blue ink to show you that it doesn't move and it also doesn't soak into my pen ruining the nib. This is an example of a card where I stamped in black hybrid ink and I colored with alcohol markers, and you can see that there is no streaking of the ink. This is an example where I stamped in hybrid ink and watercolored, and again, the ink stayed in place. Now this card shows an example where I stamped the entire background in hybrid inks. So remember, they're for stamping too, not just for coloring and watercoloring. Now let's move on to a technique I haven't talked about yet, ink blending. Ink blending can be used for a variety of different reasons in your card making. It's often used for scene building, but can also be used to add shadows, to add areas of dark and low contrast. For this example, I'm going to be showing you how to do a tone on tone look with stencils. I decided to use two different colors of green, and I started with the lighter color and started my brush off the side of my piece of paper and slowly blended towards the center. Then I rotated my paper and worked on the other side using the darker color of green. I'm having the two colors meet in the middle for a blended look. For this technique, my ink blending doesn't need to be perfect. I'm going to attach my stencil to my cardstock using some purple tape. It's low tack tape that will be easily, easily removed afterwards. And now I'm using that same lighter color of green to go over the whole thing again. So even where I've already applied this exact color of green, when I lift my stencil up, you're still going to see the stencil design because of I, I have applied a second layer of color on top. So there you go. You can see even where it was the same lighter color green below the stencil, adding that extra little bit made a big difference. The next thing I want to show you is still ink blending. However, we're going to ink blend two colors to make a third color. So I'm starting out with that amber ochre on the right, and I'm gently blending it in from the side so that there's a light coating of it in the center of my piece. Now I'm going to flip my cardstock around, and I'm going to go in with a soft pink. I'm going to apply it more heavily on the outside of the page and then go softer as I get to the center. So now I'm adding a light coating of that pink ink to the center of my cardstock, and then in a second I'm going to go over it again with the yellow and blend the two colors together seamlessly. What happens when I do this is I end up with yellow on one side, pink on the other, and sort of a coral color in the center. Now that we've finished ink blending, it's time to remove that purple tape. And even though I was being careful, I did get a little bit of tearing at that top left corner. And that's no big deal. All that means is that I'm going to trim down this piece a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and get my Tim Holtz trimmer, and I'm just going to cut a quarter inch off the sides of this ink blended piece. So now that I've gone ahead and done that, I'm going to go ahead and grab my stamping platform and some stamps, and I'm going to stamp just in black, just to put an image on top of this ink blended piece um, and really have the color shine through on this card. So I went ahead and stamped one stamp first, and now I'm going to position some smaller stamps around it just to kind of fill up that bottom left corner of the card. 
I am stamping all of these images in Nouveau Black Shadow Hybrid Ink, and I'm setting these stamps aside as I pull them off of my stamping platform because I want to make sure that I show you how to clean them properly after we use them. Now here's a look at that background that we've just stamped out, and I've cut a sentiment with love in some gold mirror card stock, and I'm just going to attach that sentiment to the front of my card using pre my precision glue pen. This is like a ballpoint pen that rolls out glue instead of ink, and it's great for using on those detailed dies. I've put some foam adhesive on the back of my card front, and I've attached it to the card base, and now I'm using some of the new iridescent opal shimmer pen to add just a little bit of sparkly detail to my card. After I'm done coloring in the flower, I like to put a little bit of ink into the top of my cap and splatter it onto my card. So there's a look at that. This card is done, so we're gonna set it off to the side so we can take a look at how to clean our stamps. So this is the Nuvo Stamp Cleaning Solution, and this is the Nuvo Stamp Cleaning Pad. It's a compact plastic case. It's slim line and can easily be stored flat or in an upright position. It has magnetic closure, so it will easily stay shut without falling open when you don't want it to. The inside has scrubbing pads on either side. Now these are soft enough to not damage your stamps, but they're textured enough to remove all the ink from the nooks and crannies of your stamp. So up at the top right of this stamping pad, I'm trying to show you that there are little water droplets, and that marking is in is on both sides of the pad. And what I've done is on one side, I've added some Nouveau drops to indicate that that is the wet side of my stamp scrubbing pad. Now you can take your solution and you can spray it directly to your pad or directly on your stamp or both, depending on what you wanna do. So I like to scrub my stamp back and forth, round and round, and you can see that it is perfectly clean. So I'm wiping a little bit of the scrubbing solution off of my block to show you. Now on the right side, some people like to spray water so that you can kind of rinse the solution off of your stamp. I prefer to leave it dry and use it to dry my stamp off after I've cleaned it. So now this stamp is ready to go back in the stamp set and I don't have to worry about it being wet. So now we're gonna repeat this process with the rest of the stamps that we used today. And I've just got them all on one block and I'm gonna give them a little bit of a spritz, especially in the bottom of that stem on that center stamp because it's really got ink caked in there. And I go back and forth, side to side, and around in circles just to make sure I'm covering all my bases. And look, there's not any ink left on those stamps. At some point, you will need to clean your stamp scrubbing pad, and you can easily do that with a couple drops of dish soap, some warm water, and some friction from your fingers. As long as you keep it clean, the stamp scrubbing pad will last you a very long time. Before I put my pad away, I forgot to show you that it has rubber feet, so it's also non-stick, so as you use it, it won't go sliding all over the place. Now, I don't know if you noticed how much ink I got all over my stamp positioner. Well, that's gonna be really easy to clean up too. Just use a paper towel or a rag and some stamp cleaning solution, and it wipes right off. You can use a rag and stamp cleaning solution on stamps too if you don't happen to have the scrubbing pad. Now let's work on the door for my stamping platform because that sucker is dirty. Now I don't know if you've ever tried to just wipe that off, but this will not come off with water and it usually takes a lot of elbow grease. But with just a little spritz of this stamping solution, it's coming off so easily and without any effort at all. Okay, now that we're done talking about cleaning, let's take a last look at what we've talked about today. We looked into four different collections of Nuvo Hybrid ink, the stamp cleaning solution, and the stamp cleaning pad. All right, you guys, I hope you found that information helpful. All of the products that I've just talked about are available now in both the UK and USA shops, so if you're interested, go check them out and see if they might fit into your craft stash. Otherwise, have an awesome Sunday, and I'll see you back here soon. Bye. Thanks, Maria, for a great introduction to stamp in there. Next up, we have got Bibi Cameron, who's going to talk to us a bit more about Nuvo Aqua Shimmers. Hi everyone, this is Bibi Cameron here for Tonic Studios. I hope you are doing well and stay safe. Today, I'm going to be chatting about Nuvo Shimmer Pens, but especially about the three new colors available now at the Tonic Studios online stores. So let's find out a little bit more about them. So now we have Rose Gold, Iridescent, and Cooper Nuvo Shimmer Pens. These pens are beautiful and they are designed to add shine to your projects. 
you can easily identify the color of each pen because they have a band around the barrel in the color of the pen and also a label with the name of the color on it. This is blush rosette. And to get started, all you need to do is to unscrew this top portion here, remove this yellow plastic ring and screw the top portion of the pen back in place until it's completely sealed. And this pen has nylon bristles in this brush tip. All you have to do is to squeeze the barrel of these pens until you see the ink coming out and getting the bristles inked. And you can totally control the ink flow depending on the amount of pressure you apply on the pen barrel. So you can totally extract the pen ink on a clear block or directly onto your artwork. Now let me show you some swatches to reveal the true colors of these pens. So I have here the three new colors and here I have the two other colors we already know that is silver and gold. I'm going to start by adding the ink of this blush rosette or rose gold shimmer pen on black cardstock and also on watercolor paper. And because these pens are translucent, it's really hard to see at first sight, but stay with me, I will show you the colors in one minute. So next I'm going to use Cooper or Sunlight Sienna. I'm going to squeeze this barrel a little bit harder so you can see a little bit better the color on that white cardstock. Then I'm going to use Opal Quartz. This one is iridescent. It adds a nice pinky purple bluish shimmer to your projects. And as you see there, it's very hard to see on white. The next color is Midas Touch. That is a gold shimmer pen. And although it's very hard to see there, Midas Touch adds a beautiful glow to your stamped images. And last but not least, I'm going to use Glitter Gloss Shimmer Pen that is silver. And something I noticed when I was working with these pens in this way is that you really need to allow the ink to dry to see the sparkle or the shine. So I'm going to allow this to dry and then here I can show you the colors on dark cardstock and also on white. And of course, because they are translucent, when you add this on a light surface, they will only add a little bit of shine. And because I added loads of that Cooper and rose gold shimmer pens on that white paper, you can see them. But this has not been designed to overwhelm, but to add a little bit of shine to stamped images or any other artwork you might have. I'm using here Peony Bloom, a stamp set by Tonic Studios, and I'm stamping some images here just to show you the colors of the shimmer pens that you can use over any artwork you might have. So you can do some heat embossing as well or stamping just with inks and add colors with any medium you might have. I'm using here Nubo Aqua Flow pens because with these pens it's very easy to add quick colors to any image. So here I'm just using the ink of the Aqua Flow on a clear block and I'm adding some drops of Opal Quartz Nubo Shimmer Pen. And I apply this on the image. And what the shimmer pen did there, it was reducing the pigment of that Nubo Aqua Flow. It make it lighter. Then I'm going to wash the brush and only with clear water, I'm going to spread that pigment that I already applied on the image towards the edges of the flower. So by mixing water, shimmer pen, and also Nubo Aqua Flow, the shimmer pen intensity also was mute or reduced. So you cannot see that shimmer as you might expect. You can see there that the image look very subtle and you can just stop there and do not add any other color. But I really want this to be a lot more vibrant. So I'm going to add more layers of color and you could keep blending the Nubo Aqua Flow Pens ink with the Nuvo Shimmer Pen ink, but I decided to use only water because it does pretty much the same. And if I want to add that beautiful shine at the very end and to be a lot more noticeable, 
I will just add the shimmer pen directly on the stamped image once it's fully colored. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm applying blush rosette or rose gold shimmer pen. And of course, you don't need to squeeze the pen that hard. I just did that because I wanted to show you the color of the shimmer pen. All you need to do is to add a very light coat of this shimmer pen over your artwork, allow to dry, and then you will be able to see that beautiful shine. In this case, it's rose gold shimmer, but of course, you can use any of the other pens that I'm going to be showing you as well in this video. Here I have another image I embellish using my dust touch and you can see that beautiful golden shine over that butterfly. It's absolutely insane. It's just beautiful and it becomes a little bit frustrating to me because the camera will never show that beauty. Okay, before keep going, I want to show you that the shimmer pens are unable to change the hue or the colors of any pigment you use together with them. So I'm going to do extreme blending here. I'm blending Sunlight Sienna, that is a very reddish shimmer pen with green. And as you see there, it didn't alter that green paint. If you apply that shimmer pen over your artwork, that shimmer pen is going to be unable to alter the colors, but the shimmer pens are going to be very able to alter the look and feel of that artwork. And I'm going to try to show you here what I mean. For the next sample, I'm going to be using opal quartz or iridescent shimmer pen. I first add color to this image using Nuvo Aquaflow pens and I darken and darken the colors just to be able to show you that shimmer pen a lot better because as we saw at the beginning of the video, that shimmer pen looks a lot better on dark colors. So I'm going to bring here my glass mat. This is the 12 by 12 Tonic Studios glass mat. And I have my image here already colored in fussy cut. And this is the opal quartz shimmer pen. And I'm going to apply a drop of that pen on the glass mat for you to see the ink color. So it's pretty translucent. <laughs> so I'm going to add that on the image. And it's very hard to see. This is the most challenging ink color to show in a video, but I'm trying my best here. So all I did is applying the ink all over the image and I allow it to dry for a very good while. I color a bunch of images while I allow this to dry. So you can see there that iridescent shine that is kind of purple looking on this flower. So that iridescent shimmer paint is also very beautiful. So after coloring that image, I got some blue ink over that clear block that I wanted to use. So I'm going to use it to smooth that ink over a watercolor paper panel, just like that. And over that clear block, I also had a little bit of the rose gold shimmer paint. And by doing this, you can also create textures for your background panels. Because if this is very subtle, I also wanted to do some splattering here just to accentuate those shimmer speckles there. And I'm using Sunlight Sienna this time to do this. And once the paper is dry, you will be able to see those copper speckles there just beautiful. So this also can help you to create distressed backgrounds if that's what you want as well. Okay, now I'm going to add Sunlight Sienna over this stamped image that I previously colored. And I'm only going to apply the shimmer paint on some areas. I'm not going to go all over the image, but I'm just going to add a hint of that shine here and there. I allow this to dry. And this is how that beautiful Cooper shine looks on this image. And of course, this is very bright, but you can see here a small comparison of an image with and without shimmer pens. And here I'm grabbing three images also with shimmer pens on them. The first one has rose gold shimmer pen. The second one is the one we just saw that has the Cooper shimmer pen. 
and this one here has the iridescent shimmer pen. This lips here has iridescent shimmer pen. This one here has copper. And this one here you can notice a little bit better the copper shimmer pen. And this last one here has rose gold shimmer pen. And my camera has been a little bit crazy today, out of focus, but there you go. So the shimmer is very subtle anyway. So last but not least, I want to say that you can go crazy with these shimmer pens if you want. You can use stencils, you can sponge this on your cardstock, you can also create galaxy backgrounds with these, and the sky is the limit. But in my humble opinion, Nubo shimmer pens are just great to add the most gorgeous finishing touches to your paper craft projects or any artwork. And now they are available in five different colors. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time and happy crafting. Bye. Thanks, BB. That's it for today's show on Tonic TV. We've got loads on the Tonic Craft Room and that's a little space on our website, kind of like a blog where it's got all of the tutorials and demonstrations that we do uh, for your favorite Tonic Studios products. You can join us next week at the same time. So until then, see you soon, everyone. Bye-bye.